From the unexplained to the mundane, come join us on a journey to the fringe. Hello and welcome to Journey to the Fringe, where we sometimes keep the topics fresh, even if the freshness is kind of a load of bullshit. We are your podcast hosts, Taylor and Chelsea, and today we look at a theory that has jumped from the screens of TikTok into your ears of Journey to the Fringe, and that is, Chelsea, brace yourself for this, Okay. Mud Flood. Okay, I've never heard of it, but I love a good TikTok theory. This is, like, you can't really find much more than a couple years old on this theory, so it it is fairly new. I love that TikTok Um, is pushing out these insane conspiracy theories. Yeah. Is it a conspiracy theory? I guess we're going to find out. Yeah, you'll find out, but I definitely think it falls into a conspiracy theory. I'm very excited about it. Somebody has to be hiding something if we don't know what mud flood is as general public people. As a general rule of thumb, I just always consider people to be hiding things. I want to know what they are. Yeah. (laughs) Which is why we always start conversations with people with that. Hey, what are you hiding? Exactly. Hey, what are you hiding? (laughs) Is it stuff? Have you ever heard of this cryptid? (laughs) Vegetable man. (laughs) We have the most well-informed audience. They are just the best social people. And if someone says yes, I'd be like, you are cultured. Yeah. (laughs) You listen to a lot of podcasts. Turning to the French specifically. Okay, let's talk about (laughs) We don't listen to enough podcasts to guarantee that, but it's probably just us, yes. Chelsea, you hear Mud Flood. What would you think this theory is? I would think somewhere where it rained a lot and there wasn't a lot of trees like an earth slide to keep yeah to keep the mud down and in some place which i guess technically yeah you basically got the gist of this theory then Uh, mud flood theory is that there was an unexplained occurrence of massive amounts of mud flooding streets and cities throughout the world sometime in the 19th century okay too much mud too much mud more mud than you would usually expect and it happened basically everywhere So mud came from somewhere, but we didn't know where. We can't get lost in the details. Okay, okay. (laughs) This is not a detailed one. But we got some details we can't get into. Where the mud (laughs) came from, we can't talk about. And why there's only one mud flood in the 1800s, we're not really going to get into that Wow, just one. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot of mud. Why haven't we heard about this? Well, it's because the mud flood actually covered up the advanced civilization of Tartaria. Oh. Which was said to span pretty much all of the world, Asia, Europe, North America. And uh, it's subsequently, okay. since the mud flood, been erased from public records. Under mud. Under mud. But there are remnants of the civilization everywhere. You would think if it's just under the mud, you just find where all the mud is and look under it. It'd be pretty easy to find. Yeah, you just dig down. And in fact, this is what the theory basically is. There are evidence of this ancient civilization that are everywhere and they're buildings that we literally use. They just seem slightly out of place. And basically they're saying they're all the fancy buildings in towns that look out of place. Like that were built in the eight. 1800s around like rickety old wooden structures and they're Mm -hmm. like those big halls built out of stone that just seem to not fit in with everything else Mm. yeah you know anything on tiktok can seem pretty convincing with that like creepy background music is that how they presented it you know what i didn't watch all of the people doing the videos i watched a couple yeah we can't expect you to do that yeah that's a lot of work (laughs) it is I'd be impressed if you said you watched every TikTok. And you people are not willing to pay us to do this, so I just volunteer my time. (laughs) Okay. Okay, so here is the evidence that gets put forward for the mud flood. There are buildings around the world, such as the Singer Building, the original New York Penn Station, and even the Great Pyramids. The Singer Building is one of them. It has been taken down. It was a fairly tall structure. Oh, this was from the Lost Civilization, you say? Yeah. They say. TikTok said. They say. TikTok said. Okay. So this is the architectural evidence that they say from the previous civilizations. 
And why do they say that? These structures are often attributed with having advanced architectural features that suggest a level of civilization far beyond what would be expected from the time period they were supposedly built. Mm, I see. And the theory suggests that these buildings are actually part of a vast empire that has been suppressed from history. And Chelsea, there are subreddits for this. There is Tartaria. There is the Tartarian architecture subreddit. I believe there's even a Mudflood subreddit. And you can see pictures of what they deem as Tartarian architecture that seems out of place. And it's basically that the colonial age has these big white structures or these brick structures that are pretty much everywhere throughout the world. And that's what they're pressing on is saying this was a civilization that we didn't know about. Okay, I really had to scroll to find the Tartaria subreddit. A lot of bad history comes up. First. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I immediately see some structures here. Outside of TikTok, it's actually really hard to find proponents of mud mm -hmm. flood. It's more a lot, a lot of debunkers you find. Yeah, I find that with some TikTok. You gotta love TikTok conspiracy theories. Big fan. I'm a big fan, yeah. actually. I love a good conspiracy. I will be a taken in by a good conspiracy theory. Logical or not, I just like them. The theory points out that there are similar styles of architecture, such as the domed capital buildings or star mm -hmm. forts. Star forts are a big one for this as well around the world. This suggests a common architectural heritage that could not have been developed independently in different parts of the world. There are also photographs from the turn of the 20th century showing deserted city streets in many capital cities across the world. This contrast between the elaborate stone megastructures and the muddy streets inhabited by horses and cart dwellers is cited as evidence of a lost civilization. The theory also suggests that these images are of cities that were once bustling but were destroyed by a catastrophic event. Mm -hmm. This theory reflects a cultural discontent in modernism and a preference for traditional styles over modern ones. And it has been described as the QAnon of architecture, suggesting a broader dissatisfaction with the perceived decline in cultural and architectural quality from historical times to the present. Not surprisingly, the word QAnon is going to come up again in this episode at some mm -hmm. point. The theory originates out of Russia with aspects first appearing in Anatoly Fomenko's new chronology and then popularized by racial occult history of Nikolai Levashov. It is presented as a rejection of the narrative that Russia was ignored in the West and a claim that Tartaria was the real name for Russia. And this aspect of the theory is deeply rooted in Russian nationalism and pseudoscience. The theory also delves into the urban development, suggesting that the underground features of modern cities, such as tunnels, buried lower floors, and excavation are remnants of Tartaria. And this interpretation is based on the observation that urban development often leads to the uncovering of old structures and the alteration of street levels. This is where you really see the TikTok videos or videos like them on there, is people walking down the street and they'll say like, oh, that's definitely a pre-mud flood building. And it's because there's windows that go below street level, they're clearly only there because something happened to raise the street level to a point where the window is below street level. Oh, they like, what about all these cities that like Seattle that had an underground and then they built the city on top? That was the mud. Yeah. Oh, that was for sure mud. I just, it just clicked for me. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to ask a question, the answer is mud. <laughs> of course. <laughs> It's just evidence. <laughs> that's the theory in the gist. Mm -hmm. I was hoping for more, but that's literally it. Nobody really talks about where the mud comes from. And the best evidence of it is that some buildings are below ground when they look like they shouldn't be. Or these buildings look like they have a round dome top. Yeah. So it's just remaining architecture. For well, and it's time. not just that. Other places like in Asia have domes on top. So why would they both build with domes on top if it wasn't some previous civilization? Forgetting the fact that we've basically colonized the entire world. Yeah. Humans, right? Yeah. Well, I meant Europeans <laughs> more, more so. Uh, yes. <laughs> They no, exported European. culture to the extreme. <laughs> yeah, no, they did do that. Basically, there's kind of two different ways to really talk about it when it comes to the below street level windows. The first thing you can say is, yeah, you know what? Over time, building up roads and debris, it, it does technically slowly but surely raise the ground level. That is something that happens. And that's why when we dig, when we look for ancient civilizations, we do dig. It's because things do get buried over time. The second part of it, though, is we've only had electricity for about 150 years. 
Sorry, I shouldn't say electricity. We've only had light bulbs, indoor lighting that is electric for about 150 years. So you used to want to get as much light as possible. So even From if under it's the really ground. low, even if it's very low, you're still going to get some light from it. Mm -hmm. So you want as many windows as possible. Yeah, that all makes sense. I don't think there's a lot to support this theory, but like Tartaria, that's a weird one, right? This hasn't come up, I don't think, before. No, I've never heard of it before. And if you look at ancient maps, there is a region that is usually labeled Tartar or Tartary. Like the spot. I'm just going to get it out of the way. We're not going to talk about the sauce at all. Completely unrelated. So, Chelsea, if you want to take a look, you can look up Map Tartary. And you can see ancient maps that label this region. Map Tartary. I mean, that doesn't really count for evidence towards anything. Well, it, it, yeah. We're gonna t it does exist. That proves the theory. It does exist. And in fact, there's even a jurisdiction. I, I can't remember what they call them. State, province in Russia called Tartar. Like, there's a Tartar people that live in Russia. Mm -hmm. This one's Chinese Tartary. And, and yeah. then there's an independent Tartary. Well, I'm going to talk a bit about that now. I didn't know this. I actually just learned this researching this. Did you know that Mongolians used to refer to themselves as the Tartars? No. And in fact, like, well before the Mongolian Empire started, it was Tartar, and it, it eventually changed mm. uh, as it was going to Mongol and uh, replaced that word. But... For that time, Europeans from the 12th century onwards used the term Tartar to refer to just this big swath of Central and Northern Asia. And it would encompass all of basically Eastern Russia to Manchuria for China. Okay. Oh, the historical name for Central Asia in Siberia. Hmm, no, I had no idea. Yeah, it's one of those weird ones that you don't really think about. And it's kind of like some people call Asia the Orient. And it's because East used to be the top of the map. So it was the Orient of the map with Asia on top. Oh, wow, I'm learning a lot. But that name kind of fell out of favor as we actually learned and traveled to these places and learned what people wanted to be called. So as maps get more and more recent, it falls out of favor because we're like, well, they don't call themselves Tartars, they're Mongolian. So let's just put their borders there and give it Mongolia. Except when you get to other places where we just tell them what they're supposed to be called, like Japan and Korea and China. They don't call themselves that in their languages at all. We just decided to pick their ruler's name and make that their country. Oh, I didn't know that. I assume that we gave the names to a lot of people. I have a theory that there's kind of a life cycle of how we named countries. When we were first starting out, we kind of said, hey, what do you want to be called? And that's how most countries kind of get their names for Europe. France wants to be called France, sure. England wants to be called England, sure. Didn't get that far, though, because the Germans call themselves Deutschland. The next step is we went somewhere, asked who was in charge, and said, okay, that's your name. That's where Eastern Asia gets its names, China, Korea, Japan, which are really Jungwo, Hangu, and Ilbun, I think is what Japan is in China. Japanese, uh, urban. I can't remember if they do ours or else. And then after that, we said, okay, you can name yourself anything you want. And that's how we got the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Hmm. I love that we still just call it those things that we gave it. Yeah, that's my theory anyways. <laughs> we went from passive to very aggressive back to passive. So the Tartar, Tartar, Tar, ah, geez, I can't even say it. Tartaria originates from the Mongol Empire and apparently is just a continuation of it that made it up until fairly recent days, like 200 years ago-ish. And then we decided to cover up its entire historical record. Okay, so the theory actually says that it's from this area. I shouldn't say okay, that. It just it's just this, this evidence okay. that the Tartar Empire huh. did exist doesn't mean that that's where it only was or where it originated from. And that's the hard part you get with the Tartar part of it is nobody really talks about the actual whole empire where it starts from and whatnot. It's just it was an advanced civilization, which they must have been because we inhabit their buildings still to this day. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. The workmanship. Yeah. Unmatched. I'm just going to quote now from a Bloomberg article that I was reading for this. The Tartaria storyline is not directly related to the adrenochrome harvesting satanic pedophile cabal that lies at the heart of QAnon, the unfounded conspiracy theory that crashed into the real world in 2020, but oh, it shares no. some of what Peter Ditto, a social psychologist at the University of California, Irvine, who specializes in conspiracy theories, calls QAnon's cafeteria quality. There's no overarching narrative or single authorial voice interpreting events. It's just a gusher of outlandish speculation. Adherents can pick and choose which elements they want to sign on to. 
And that's what I mean. Like, it, it's hard to actually get an overall idea as people are more so just wanting to point out little things that allude to Tartaria than what Tartaria is. Yeah. And I think you get that a lot with TikTok with people just making short videos, probably being like, look, this is evidence. I did find I... on the Tartaria subreddits, they do list a few YouTubers who push or explain the theory. None of them are good. I have to say, or some of them videos are too long. I didn't want to get into it. So archaics might be good. I haven't had time to watch his two hour videos. Yeah. One quote from one YouTuber named John Levi is with these preserved buildings around us, we would have viewed the whole world differently. And we would not have thought about Greece and Rome and Turkey as separate places from us here in North America. No, the world would have a unified feel once people realize that there was a one world people building the same style everywhere. So that's his theory as to why it's being hidden. A lot of different people have different explanations for why it's being hidden. Some of them incredibly anti-Semitic. Others just... Not as bad, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's, yeah. Chelsea, I did want to show you one of his videos. I have one right down the road from me. Tartarian building, Riverview Hospital. Look how fancy he is. So this is John Levi going over his, what he believes is evidence that Salt Lake City um, was built by somebody else. Today, I want to look at abandoned Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City in ruins. This is a collection of 73 photos from 1850 to 1964. Here it says Utah's <laughs> capital, Salt lighting. Lake City, was founded by Brigham Young in 1847. It becomes a state in 1894. The Enabling Act, signed by Grover Cleveland. So here we go. All of this city is essentially built out before it's even a state. Just a big gamble, if we're to believe the narrative. And I've lived in Salt Lake City. And right away, even before doing this research over 20 years ago, I thought to myself, why is this city so worldly and European? Salt My Lake best city friend is growing so up worldly. Was Mormon. I really heard Their about Their family that lived next city. door. And they're very kind and simple people. To this day, I just, he the describes the city as being in ruins. You gotta remember, this is the 1800s, so photo quality isn't great. Yeah. I can't say that that's in ruins. Yeah. No, I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, if it was in ruins, I would be like, wow, yeah. that city is in ruins. It looks like a regular We see a completely built out city in ruins. This absolute tech on the top. It doesn't look like it's been recently built. It looks as if they're just recently erecting this scaffold around it. For what? what I don't know. Maybe they're going to remove it. So he it. says that it looks like this was not recently built. Doesn't cite anything or explain why he feels that way. But that the scaffolding around it no. is new. In his opinion. Yeah. And then I love this. For he sure. speculates on what they're doing up there. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Maybe they're going to blow it up. Maybe there's TNT in these boxes. The caption tells yeah, us George Albert Smith and Temple electrician Ephraim holding copper on the southeast tower of the temple prior to 1893 dedication. Anyway, does this so they're electrifying it. They're putting oh, copper wire in. <laughs> would have been beautified by now. Brick or stone or whatever. Not this. Not with that Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. And a whole you can even see they're putting light bulbs in. in. Well, that's what they're doing, right? You <laughs> cannot. Yeah, you couldn't amend that if that's what they're really doing. I just, like, that's the effort that goes into this theory. <laughs> like, this is. These all seem out of place. It's, it's a TikTok theory. Of course it is. I love how he's saying that that's yeah. not a new building. It actually looks newer than any of the other buildings in the picture. A little family, perhaps in the bicycle business. Really creepy swimming photo. I don't know what's going on here. This person back here looks like he's walking on water. And here's how they went swimming. Really what having is he uniforms, just doing while not looking like normal people. <laughs> These look like uniforms. This is a creepy child. It looks like he has a beard and is old. I think in the Bible it says your children will be born it's old. Child. That's not, not a child. child. I know. You think that's a child? Interpreting it. Idiot. 
It didn't look like a child. It looked like an old guy. <laughs> this guy just, I, I love it. And then Chelsea, I, I saw somebody post a Telegram link for this stuff. And this was the first video that popped up oh on the Tartaria okay. and History channel Telegram. This gave me the vibes of this channel immediately. Hey everybody, I could not find out how to turn videos in Telegram into audio for the podcast, so I have to describe this video to you now. This man is asked about his thoughts on the solar eclipse coming on April 8th. His first statement is that you should not take any glasses or light filters from anybody. You should just stare directly at the solar eclipse because he did it last time for 20 straight minutes and it was the most beautiful thing he's ever done. It goes on from there, but I kid you not, that is actually what he is saying. Please go find this video. It is just ridiculous. I really wanted to include this video, so sorry I wasn't able to figure this out. Also, in case it's not very apparent based on how I just described this, you should never look directly at the solar eclipse unless you have protective eyewear that is certified for looking at a solar eclipse. That's the first video is, hey, you can look straight at a solar eclipse. So that's the world this conspiracy theory inhabits. Arteria. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, but why is that even posted on there about Tartaria? I don't know. I can't even figure who this guy is because now I want to do an episode on him. But I have no idea who he is. <laughs> he just looked right at the eclipse. Yeah, so that's that's Tartaria and the Mud Flood. I was hoping for so much more, but there's just nothing okay, behind nice. this. So I decided what is an episode about a lost civilization if we don't rope in a genocide of sorts. So I think... I think this seems oh, no. somewhat be connected to the hemetic hypothesis, which Chelsea, I don't think you have ever heard this term. Noah had a few kids. Maybe. One of them was Ham. His name was Ham. One of them was Sem. That's where the Semites come from. What about meatloaf? No meatloaf. Ham. No meatloafites. But anyhow, when we're discovering the world as Europeans, there was always rumors of white civilizations being out there. And the theory was proposed that this can all be traced back to Ham, one of Noah's kids, who spread off to Africa. And it's called the Hamitic theory, or Hamitic hypothesis, that that's why there were white tribes in Africa. Mm -hmm. Sounds scientific. Yeah, and I kind of feel like you can, at the end of the day, draw this back to, too, is the idea of there just being large civilization out there. Like, it kind of feels like, because it's world spanning and they're just saying it's like this big European federation or a uh, European civilization that was all over the world before we got there. Does it not? Yeah. So I looked a bit at the Hamitic hypothesis and it turns out that Rwanda, this theory took quite a hold there and the Tutsi population actually said that they originate from Ham and they're originally from white people. That's where their tribe comes from. Part of this racial difference with the Tutsis ends up leading to the Rwanda genocide of the Tutsi people where mm. 500 to 800,000 people were machete down in the streets. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's crazy. I was very surprised when I learned that. I'm not sure what to do with this information. That is insane. I think that's where I'm going to leave that off. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't have much more. That's it. What? Okay. I don't know what to do with that information. I mean, I know what to do with the mud flood information. The QAnon theories are just insane. And yeah, sorry I put that little curveball in at the end. I just felt like I couldn't do an episode about a lost civilization without getting a genocide in there. And sure enough, no, this you, one I feel is close enough to actually put it in there. They do really all connect the ge the genocides together. Yeah. Um, really. But outside of that, it, <laughs> I'm it, glad you brought it back. Yeah. It just seems Mud like flood. Okay, I have to remember fun on TikTok. That's <laughs> literally it. It's like, because nobody seems to want to explain the mud flood. They just no hey, TikTok it's theories are the best. Oh, we should do more TikTok theories because it's literally just like a couple second video set to like some like spooky music or something, and then you get so into the music and they say it really nice, and you're like, oh yeah, I'm totally behind this conspiracy theory, and then you lay it out like you do in the real world, and then you're like, oh fuck. Yeah, or if you give somebody more You're than like, a minute, man, are they going to screw it up, apparently. Now, what I'm wondering, why mud flood? Why? What, that has no bearing on it, it doesn't seem. On Tartaria, or... Um... Yeah, like, why, why, where does the mud come from? Well, the mud is we because 
all the old photos just seem to be one muddy and two things seem to be slightly below ground so they they're literally just like this could be the only explanation mud came through and put this below ground so they're they're using it as a pre-mud like post mud yeah basically now we're a lot cleaner there's a lot less mud these days but we have these weird buildings that seem like they came from before the mud yeah okay I'm glad well, you understand the theory. <laughs> I'm sorry to anyone who is listening to this, thinking this could really be something, but they kind of sound like idiots. <laughs> but a fun uh, theory, nonetheless. Yeah, no, that that was definitely fun. It, I guess that's, that's what I have to say about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, I hope you guys had a good time for this ride. I was hoping for so much more out of this one. I kept pushing this episode off because I'm like, the script isn't coming together. But like I said, we're not paid to do this, so I'm not going to throw out my research. So you watch the TikTok and you're like, holy shit, this could really be something. There is something here. I was thinking this would be a great episode. I'm sure there's something put into this. <laughs> and boy, did it disappoint. Yeah. Not a mud flood believer, hey? Not a mud flood believer. That's where I ended up. You guys can do whatever you want. I probably will judge, though. In the end, you really can do what you want. Yeah. And that's the th- that's that's what we should leave this on. Nobody has, unfortunately, given us that yeah. power yet. Just, just probably don't commit a genocide. And what was it? Ham? Hamedic hypothesis. Yeah, that that one. I'm not sure where I was going with that, but uh, this seems like a good place to end it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and with that, I have been Taylor here with Chelsea. <laughs> we are Journey to the Fringe. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to Journey to the Fringe. If you have liked what you have listened to, please like, share, subscribe, or follow, depending on what venue you are listening to us through also please if possible leave a five star review as that really helps us in the algorithms should you wish to interact with us please check us out on your social media of choice i bet you we are there and if you really want to communicate with us and give us ideas for new episodes or tell us that we're wrong and terrible either way please send us an email at journey to the fringe at gmail.com for now i'll see you in the next episode (laughs) 